Michael, mm-hmm. thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you for having me. Um, the first question that I had for you was, um, in The Wealth of Nations, the great economist Adam Smith writes, the most abundant mines, either of the precious metals or of the precious stones, could add little to the wealth of the world. As an economist, how do you define wealth? So let me first explain what he meant in my view. So before Adam Smith, uh, one of the schools of thought that uh, was prevalent for 200 years before Adam Smith was the mercantilism. Mercantilists are the first ones that started studying the economy. And they believe that the source of wealth of nations comes from precious metals and diamonds. Uh, Adam Smith, on the other hand, uh, believed that that's not the main source of wealth. It's what humans are able to produce. What people are able to produce, that's the source of wealth. So the modern definition of wealth is very close to Adam Smith's. We define standard of living in a country as real GDP per capita. So that's the value of all the goods and services that uh, an economy can produce divided by population. We say a country is rich if it has high real GDP per capita. So it's the ability to produce goods. Uh, Take, for example, Silicon Valley. Uh, It doesn't have that much gold or precious metals. It's, It's rich. It's one of the richest places on Earth, not because of the natural resources, but because of the goods and services that are produced by companies located here. Now, at individual level, wealth is usually defined by, by net worth. It's all the uh, houses, the real estate income that you have, uh, perhaps financial assets, all your assets. I would define wealth as the ability to produce income. So all the, the, that includes gold. So if you give me gold, that's for sure will contribute to my wealth, but also my savings account and uh, all the assets I've accumulated over time, that's, uh, that's ability to produce income because I can take those assets, sell them. If I own a house, I can sell that house or rent it and it can generate income. I would also augment uh, the definition of wealth to include human capital. So for example, consider LeBron James. He's definitely wealthy. His net worth is $1 billion, but suppose you take away all of his uh, assets, his mentions, numerous mentions, take his bank account, evaporate all his savings, his portfolio, he still would be considered, in my view, a wealthy person because of his human capital, because of his skills. So if he starts from scratch right now, he is still going to be produce a lot of income because of his skill, his knowledge, and his brand name. He can still sell shoes, merchandise, and he can generate income. So your ability to generate income defines wealth. So wealth is anything that helps you generate income. So if you want to become wealthy, you need to acquire or obtain somehow assets that can generate income. Yeah, and hearing you um, give the example of LeBron James, it sort of makes me think of how social media has maybe augmented um, how how, how much a person that has very um, tangible and um, demand in-demand skills like LeBron James, mm-hmm. how much that augments their ability to earn. What can you say about the impact social media has had and how wealth is acquired by human beings and how it's maintained? Yeah, social media is, is so broad. Uh, you are bombarded with so much information uh, at every second of your day. So it's it's very difficult to narrow down this kind of very broad question, but um, but I, I'm not paying that much attention to social media definitions exactly f- for that. But I define uh, wealth as anything, all the assets that you have, tangible and non-tangible. So for example, suppose that you are a brain surgeon. Your wealth is not in gold, uh, is not represented in gold and diamonds, but in your skill level, in your knowledge. If you are an accountant or if you are a lawyer, your knowledge of the law is, uh, is your wealth. Is, uh, we define it as, uh, we call it human capital. Mm. So LeBron James is definitely wealthy, not only in tangible, uh, uh, tangible wealth like mansions and his portfolio, 
and ownership in different uh, teams, uh, uh, athletic teams, but uh, in his uh, skill. It, yeah. I mean, it's clearly that he has enormous genius IQ mm -hmm. when you watch him play. He, you can ask him one week later after a game and he will tell you at this moment, at any moment, where was each team member located on the court and the opponent's team. So he has a genius uh, skill and that's part of his wealth. Mm -hmm.